Chihuahua lo tiene sobre piernas tambaleantes. Está lastimado el argentino. Ahí con el gancho izquierdo lo vuelve a masacrar, a cribillar. Y lo deposita en la lona para que la pelea ya no continúe. Se lleva la victoria David Rodríguez. Welcome to the Father's Day. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Remember to support the Father's Day by going to the fatherstate.tv slash donate. And also, you can join us on, YouTube, on our locals, locals.com. Click the link in the description and support our work. I do appreciate it. I have with me David Nino Rodriguez. He is a former heavyweight boxing champion, best-selling author, and the host of Nino's Corner TV. Nino, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I like the studio. It's nice. Thank you, man. Yeah. So, so do you want to be called David or Nino? Uh, most people call me Nino, but okay. David or Nino. Works. Nino. So um, what's important to you? What's important to me Yeah. right now, uh, and I'm going to keep it as friendly as possible, I think the the... The political paradigm that we're in right now, I think what's important to me right now is deep state politics. You know, that's what I'm covering on my channel. Right. That's what I dive deep into. The, it's like the one-stop shop of everything war on the deep state. And I think that right now is, uh, I'm trying to lead the charge on that and wake people up. And why is that so important to you? Because as I was telling you earlier, I think it's, we're at a point now in, in, in humanity, society, where you're either asleep or you're awake. And it's very important at this crucial time to start waking up more and more people. Yeah. And that's just how I see it because uh, we're, we're in deep trouble. And yeah. that's what you deal with on your podcast, yeah. the deep state issues and stuff like that. Yeah, because I've it's, been, I'm trying to sound the alarm bells. I've been saying for a long time, we now have a one-party system. It used to be Democrats and Republican. Now it's just Democrat. Right. There's no Republican. Well, party. and the rhinos, you know, they're, they're all right. together. They're all working yeah. together. I mean, yeah. both sides is just as guilty. Absolutely. You know, so Same it's really thing. the deep state swamp that we're up against here, and uh, and I think they're being exposed in mass. The more stuff that's happening right now, it's a red pill. Uh, it's a red pill for society, for especially for America to see. What are what these swamp swamp creatures are really doing to our yeah. to our country? You Absolutely, know, so man. Uh, so would you consider yourself conservative, liberal, Democrat, Republican? I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't subscribe to that really. I, I would say, yeah, I lean more fiscally conservative, but there's a lot of liberal views I have as well, you know. But yeah. but I, I think for me, like I said earlier, it's more about being either you're awake or you're asleep. You either see the system for what it is, and we break out of this matrix, right. or we stay confined to it and and pigeonholed into this little shoebox of consciousness that I'm trying to help my audience come out of. Oh, okay, nice. And so, since I don't know a lot about you, are you a Christian? Yeah, you yes, are sir. a Christian. Yes, sir. And why? Well, you know, I was I was raised Catholic, you know, and I grew up as an altar boy, you know, and then I kind of left. The, 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 I left religion as a whole and I went on to my own awakening process and I've realized through the years as I've done that I've come right back full circle to the Bible uh, so I've realized there's a lot of, <laughs> there's the truth in that you know so yeah. to me personally uh, you know and I say this over and over you know Jesus Christ is my savior and that's and that's how I, I that's that's my personal views and that's what's close to my heart and and, and what has it being a Christian done for you personally? Well, my, my you know, everyone's experience is different, but right. my, my walk in with God is always my own intimate relationship. And, and I can only say that for me personally, throughout my boxing career, throughout my, my whole life, uh, you know, almost dying twice. I, uh, being a raging alcoholic, I'm three and a half years, so three years. Yeah, I read myself. that uh, Christianity turned you around. It took yeah. away the alcoholism. Yeah. Um, and so, personally, it's taking away alcoholism, the alcohol. You gotta have a higher, a higher power. You know, if you you can't, you know, people try to quit alcohol. You can't do it alone. I, I, for me personally, it's been a higher power. I, I, be, I believe that I have a soul contract, and that contract right now is, I am not drinking. I'm done with that life. I am trying to live a cleaner life. 
I'm sober, and, and so my life has improved immensely. So you don't drink at all? No. You no. want a glass of Merlot right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> I miss it. I'm not going to say I don't miss it. I'm not going to lie. It's I mean, so good with steak. I know it is. Trust me. Oh, but my God. I, trust me. I'm with you on this 100%. I miss it. But Jesus drank wine. I know. He made wine. He drank wine. What's wrong with a little wine? Nothing's wrong with it. But I'll say this. For me, it'll be like that for a while. And then it was like throwing gasoline on fire. I'll have a couple glasses of wine. Right. Next thing you know... Yeah, I think I'll take that tequila shot. You know, what I mean? next thing you know, let's have another one. Yeah. You know, that's the way I that's the way I rolled. And and honestly, for me, I have to. I just had to put the brakes on completely for me. Why did why were you why did you have a problem with alcohol? I don't know. What I, that? I was raised I was raised in El Paso, right, in Ciudad Juarez on the border. Right. So by the time we were 13, 14 years old, it was you were pretty much an alcoholic. We were going over there, and it was like our it was like our Las Vegas. We had a whole entire country to our disposal, third world country, Mexico. So growing up on the border was like a free for all, man. Like you went there and, and, and anything went, it was like the wild west. Right. So by the time we were 13, 14 years old, we were partying like we were college kids. Oh. And then going into that, then and, and, and listen, this last year I've lost four friends to alcoholism and I lost my sister to alcoholism. They you died become, from drinking? Yes, oh. and you, be, you were raging alcoholics since you're a teenager. That's but, just the culture there. So did you ever just understand why you were drinking? Because there's a cause. It was normal. Fact. It was normal. It was to normal me. to get into it. It was normal to me. To me, oh. it was just. It was just really. Um, it was really just the way life was. I mean, you grow up in a in a border town, and you go to high school there. You 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 grow up going to bars and clubs at 13. All right. So you're Hispanic, right? Yeah. How, How come you look white? <laughs> <laughs> Let me grow this out. I, look, I don't know. My mom's white. My dad's, oh, a, your my mother dad's white. a lighter Mexican. Well, my grandfather's as dark as you are. Oh, yeah? <laughs> wow. So your Zindian. mother's white and your father Hispanic. My dad's, yeah. My, I oh. get the darker features from my dad, but my mom's blue-eyed blonde. And so do you date white women or Mexican women? I date them all. You date them all? I date them all. You date black women, too? I have. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show already. <laughs> Did you know once you go black, you can't go back? <laughs> I think that only uh, is for the men. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so you dated white women, black yeah, women. I, dated them all. I mean, it, which, beauty, beauty's which, beauty, man. Which race was the easiest to deal with? You know. Uh, they all have. I, I got to be honest. As far as the women and dating them, I, I, I'm with I'm with a girl right now that's awesome, and she's old school. She's she's from her family's from Montenegro. Oh, and so they're not, I, I I can't really. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like the American women, I have a problem. There, it, a lot of them are damaged goods. Yeah. And I I just try. I I've learned to just kind of this the, the girl I'm dating right now is kind of old school culture. Comes from a good family. Uh, and and I really like that. I'm in a really good situation with her right now. And you say her family came from old Negro? Montenegro. Montenegros? Montenegros. What? <laughs> Albania. Oh. Albania. Oh, man. Montenegro. Yeah. Uh. You're going to get me in trouble, man. <laughs> and so how do you deal with the hell in her when it comes out? No. Is she, is she older than you? We haven't fought. She's younger than me, but we, we don't fight. She's a very she's a very peaceful, loving girl. I, and that's why I'm with her. Now, most of my relationships have been toxic, right? Bad. Yeah. Especially you add alcohol into that. So right. for for me personally, like like I said, it's gasoline on fire, and then they drink too. And honestly, honestly, it's it's a it's a breath of fresh air to be with a girl that that has those old school um, morals. Yeah. Absolutely. It comes from a good family. Yeah. It's not like, like I've like I've, like my friends. They all have these toxic relationships. Yeah. And it's how come women so crazy? These that's days? what I'm saying. That's why I'm I'm happy where I'm at right now because yeah. I don't like to even dip my toe into that. You know. It's and so being a Christian that took away the desire for alcohol. Right? No, I still romance with it. You know, I yeah. still think about it all the time. You know, right. but I know that for me personally, I have to be. It's the same thing. As when I used to go to training camp for boxing fights, I used to be able to put that stuff away for about three months, right. and then I'd go right into. And then after the fight, I'd fall right back into it. Right. When the last time you had a drink? Three years and nine months. Really? Yeah. Um, have you ever wondered being a Christian? So God took away that 
desire, even though uh, he had a thought about it. I could, I could tell you how it happened. I mean, I, okay. I, uh, I've had a lot of incidences. I almost died twice in 2011. How? I overdosed on drugs, flatlined. Really? And I, they brought me back with a defibrillator. Did you leave your body? Uh, it's kind of a funny story about that. There's a lot of paranormal stuff that did happen to me, and I saw my funeral. Uh, but I don't know if that was a dream or what that was. Right. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't feel like I floated out of my body, but I was in cardiac arrest, and they brought me back with a defibrillator. What was it like seeing your own funeral? You saw people it was at not the funeral? After I, was, I got wheeled into the hospital room after I left ICU, and I started remembering these almost like visions that I had where I was watching my parents cry over my body in, in, a, in, in an open casket. Wow. And, I, and I, I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was a dream. I don't know what that was. And that came from an overdose, you say? Yeah. Of what? Well, I was taking, well, I was right after my fight <laughs> with Matt Hicks. I was, went to my locker room. I was drinking tequila, beer, everything. And then I went on a plane to Dallas the next day drunk to go to a party, an after party there. And when I was there, I was taking pain pills, Molly. I thought I was Superman. I thought I could do anything and nothing would happen. That's why you were doing all that? You yeah, I was just, I just, I, but I also it was an escape. Yeah. It was an escape. I just, I really just wanted out of boxing at that time. Right. And I think that just the pressure and everything with the sport was just compounding on me. And I, uh, I was just taking tons of stuff. And then I took this stuff called GHB, which is like the date rape drug. And when I took that, game yeah, over, man. Yeah. It was over. And I think, honestly, I was looking for a way out. Yeah. And uh, the only way for me was by doing massive amounts of drugs and alcohol. And I think it was probably a, a death wish. It was probably like a, a, you know, I probably wanted to commit suicide. I, and so what was the second time, if you could say, that you almost died? I was the, the same year, believe it or not. So that happened, th that overdose happened, and then... Um, I went on to win two more belts in boxing, uh, knocked out Owen Beck, a guy that was formerly number one. I mean, I, I was climbing up the ranks, won the WBC Hispanic Heavyweight Championship or Mexican Heavyweight Championship, which I fought a black guy, so that doesn't even make any sense. I don't see how that was for the Mexican Heavyweight Championship. I know. <laughs> what now? <nah? laughs> but anyway, so anyway, so then, uh, uh, you know, I won two belts and then uh, uh, went off. Partying with friends again, like I said, I was juggling two ex different extremes. I was doing the training and the, and the and the hardcore training, and then after fights, I'd go party. Like it was, like pedal to the metal. Like it just, I could not be so. I could not be with myself. I was so right. uncomfortable being in my own in my own skin. If I was distracted training, I had to distract myself, drinking, partying, womanizing, do the whole thing, right? right. So then, um, you know, I went and I was leaving a um, a bar, and there was some an altercation. And, the, and people say, well, what happened, this and that? Well, I was so wasted drunk from alcohol that, that uh, and Molly and some other drugs I took that I really couldn't tell you. But I was leaving the bar, and they came behind me, and they slit my throat. So that. Whoa. Yeah. And you and passed then I, out? I bled out, and blood just poured out of my neck. It took 369 stitches. Uh, they came behind me and did it. So it wasn't like they... They jumped me or anything like that. They came behind me, slit my throat, and I just remember uh, my friend come running behind me, like, what's, you know, he was like, what's the, come he, I saw him like panicking, and then they started stabbing him. And, and, they, and why, was it, why did they attack you? I wish I knew. Oh, you, because you two dropped to uh, know. Uh, I, I mean, it could have been anything, man. Yeah. Like I said, there was an altercation. I, I was also, uh, look, I don't play victim. I never play victim, right. okay? Yeah, so I'm not yeah. sitting here saying, oh, poor me, this is, it was That's terrible. Right. No, man. Uh, that's why I quit drinking. Whatever I did, I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Why? Because I was drinking and I was, I was irresponsible. So what? I take full responsibility. Wow. And and so did you leave your body then? Uh, that's that's kind of that that kind of was a little different. That was uh, I do remember, um, in the ambulance with the paramedics. I remember I could see everything from a, a different perspective. I was I was out on the on the the gurney or whatever they had on me on, in the ambulance. Yeah. And I remember I was trying to tell the paramedics to be calm, it's okay. I felt totally at peace. I felt like, honestly, it felt like a warm blanket was put over me and I was just, I just felt at peace. Like I was, I, I honestly felt a lot of love and I felt like I don't, I don't need to be here anymore. And I said a prayer to every, everyone in my family 
sorry, I'm out, I'm gone. Wow. I can't believe I did this. I, and I took responsibility for it even then. And I even told the paramedics, I was like, hey, hey guys, because they were dropping syringes and they were full of blood and they were yeah. panicking. And I told them, calm down. I was like, hey, guys, please, calm down. I was like, I'm, I'm clean. But they I said I'm hear clean. You. Right, because you're in a different spirit there. And so why did you come back to your body? I don't, I don't remember any of that part. I mean, oh, I'd be okay. lying to you if I sat here right. and said, well, you know, I saw this bright light and I, right. I'd be lying to you. So all I can tell you is that I woke up the next day and they said I was, I guess, like in a coma and I had 369 stitches. They walked in with a therapist to prepare me for what I was going to see, which was my face just, it was out to here with stitches all the way down it. And remarkably enough, it's a miracle, honestly, that I have no nerve damage, nice. none. And I can't believe it. So there's a lot of things that, that just don't add up. Amazing. Why did you get into boxing? Uh, it was, boxing started for me, I, I was five years old, I was bullied in school. And my dad, you know, I was getting beat up a lot by a girl. All right. By a girl? Yeah. What a baby. I was a five years old kid, okay? So, oh. so, <laughs> so uh, my dad said, no, 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 that's not going to happen anymore. So yeah. he just dropped me off at the. Back then, boxing gyms are not mm. like what it is today. Like it's commercialized. Yeah. And you go to every corner, every block, there's a gym. There's a gym Back yeah. then, the gyms were in the ghetto. And my dad took me to the ghetto where he just dropped me off. And that was it. And I had to learn how to fight, and I did. So, was boxing ever anything that you wanted to do? Or was it because it got started in that way? It got started in that way. So you didn't want to do it. Why did no, you I did later. I did. I grew into the sport. To want it. Yeah, I started knocking guys out. And by the time I was 12 years old, I was knocking out grown men. Wow. And it was just like something that just came so naturally to me. Right. I, I couldn't believe the power I possessed in my, my hands. And then as you got older, you started drinking and things. And you didn't want to box then? You wanted to get I out? I just was doing it all. I just, I was a, I, you know, there was no, it was zero to 100, man. There was no 50. Yeah. There was no 45. I was zero to 100. Oh, I, I didn't see. understand pulling the reins back. I was going to go all in for everything. I yeah, all you. my fights, if I went out and partied, I was going all in. Everything I did was pedal to the metal. You know what I mean? I but had you no. Said, you said earlier that you wanted out of Boston. Towards yeah. the end, yeah. Once I hit about 30 and 0, 36 and 0, out. once I was, I was undefeated, I, felt, I started feeling pressure like I've never felt before because I was knocking everybody out. I had 24, 25, well, 25 first round knockouts. And I was feeling pressure from all sides, man. And uh -huh. I, I really mentally broke. I mentally Why broke. do you just quit as an adult? Because I, I, I just didn't know how to do that. I just, I, I didn't know how to, I couldn't just quit. Why not? I don't know, because I didn't want to quit. I knew I had to finish the game. And were you a Christian at the time? Okay. I was falling back a lot. I oh, was okay. I was not really I can't say I was, you know. I believe I've always believed in God. So don't don't right. think I did not. I've right. always had no, a I'm relationship with God, but I was I'm mean, come on, come on. I wasn't I wasn't living the life. You but know? you wanted out as an adult and you couldn't get out of it. Do, do you think you're going to hurt somebody if you got out? Like people would be disappointed or you Yeah, I had a lot of expectations on me. And you thought people would be disappointed? I'd be disappointed in myself. I had to see it through. Oh, so when you finally left, is it because you left, you had seen it through, you were done? Well, I got knocked out on television, so that kind of settled it right there. I uh, I fought Darnell Wilson, and we had the fight of the year. But that was after this, after this happened, and I just was not in the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. I I was a mess. I, you know, usually when I went into fights, I was very calm, cool, collected, calm. You know, I went in there as a calculated killer. And after this incident and all the stuff that happened to me, I was a, a wreck. And I just left my, 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 my team that got me, got me to the point I was at. We had a big falling out. I went with a new team. And I should have like went and saw a therapist. I, went and saw, I should have seen like a psychologist, a sports psychologist. Instead, I just jumped right back into training, not even let myself heal, and went for it all once again. And I oh. moved to Vegas, which I never did. I always, always was training in Houston or El Paso, places where I had no distractions. And I went to Vegas where all I was training and partying, taking shortcuts, I was a mess. Yeah. And, and I got what I, you know, it happened. And, and it, it ended the way it needed to. Right. I take full responsibility. And when you got your face slashed like that, did that, did that create insecurity 
And you like, were you embarrassed no, by it or anything? I was mean. I was meaner. You were mad about it. I was fucking. I was pissed. Sorry. <laughs> I was pissed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so. Um, no, and that's what that's what set me off is that every time I fought, I had fear. Right. I was scared every time I got into the ring. Up to th I was thirty six and zero. And what were you afraid of? Losing or getting humiliated, whatever. Mm -hmm. I was just scared to get in there. I was every fighter is okay. Right, of course. But after that, <laughs> after this incident, I was just mad, and I wasn't scared anymore. And I just I had no fear, and that's why I lost because I had no fear. Yeah. Nah. Um, being a Christian, I'm going to ask us ask you about fear. Yeah. Are you surprised that God hasn't taken your? Not that you're not. I don't mean physical fear of taking care of yourself. You can handle that. But are you surprised being a Christian that God has not taken away your fear inside? That you still have that fear? It's not that the fear's gone. I just feel at peace. Right. I feel like no matter, no matter what happens, I'm okay. And are you surprised that God hasn't taken away the, spirit, the uh, fear? No, because you need that. Why? Cause, because I think fear keeps you sharp. On what? Just on your toes. It but it also you. keep you in misery. Well, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I have more of a performance fear. I guess that's what you're, yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I don't not, mean I'm like, not fear of life anymore, no. Right, no. but this inner fear that you wake uh, up in the morning feeling. No, you, I don't have that anymore. anymore. I, I'm more at peace with myself, the decisions I've made. I'm an older man now, I'm 45, so I've kind of made my mistakes and now I've kind of re realized, you know, I've retired from boxing. I have nothing to prove anymore. And, and now I'm just, I'm just kind of looking, I'm instead of the pinball life that I had up, down, up, down, you know, highs, lows, highs, lows, highs, lows, now is more, it's just coasting and it's elevating and, and I feel better like that. I don't, I don't do want do? that extreme life anymore. What do you do when you do experience interfere from within? I pray. Not physically, you pray? Yeah. I and pray. what do you pray? I'll pray sometimes a rosary, that calms me down. I, I'll. Uh, uh, I, I just say my prayers, you know. I, I, I just talk to God, honestly, and that's, and that's what sets me straight. And then, but the fear still come back at times. And you like, do you ask God, what the? Well, I'll be honest with you, like, I've faced down some demons, man. Yeah. You know, I, I've had some real uh, serious issues come up, especially the recently. And uh, I just feel like, for me personally, I've experienced, you know, getting your throat cut open and watching your own blood go onto the cement is pretty damn crazy. And to experience that, anything after that is cakewalk. Which is harder <laughs> to deal with or easier to take? The inner demons or the, the things that happen in the physical? Which is harder, the inner, inner demons. demons? The inner demons yeah. are harder? In what Battling way? my own demons, but if you can conquer your own demons, right? Yeah. Then you've got it made. And I feel like I've at least named them <laughs> yeah, you know, if I, I I can honestly say like that. You know, I know they're there. Yeah. You know, I know my demons are there. I just don't let them control my life anymore. And do you still have anger? No, nah, not really. Not, you not you really. never get angry. I get angry like everyone does, but I'm not. It doesn't control my life anymore. Like in other words, like if something gets on my nerves or someone's being confrontational or something like that. I look at it for what it is. I figure out they have issues. Right. They're dumping their garbage on me with yeah. whatever insecurities they have, and I just let it go. Like I've been able to be a lot more responsible, mature about things in the last few years, especially since I've been sober. Right. That sober really has given me a different perspective. Absolutely. Because it's just it's just changed the game, and it's it's much more pleasant and it's a lot more peaceful uh, than than living that life of being in a pinball machine where I was up and down, up and down, and from drinking. It's like it's. Right. That was no life. And, I'm sorry, but what, what's the title of your inner demons now? What's that? W w you name your inner demons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a figure of speech. Yeah, I, I, I didn't saying, really name them all, but uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it's just not something you, I've learned to know that they're there. Yeah. And I don't have to, I don't, ha I don't have to be scared of them anymore. I know we all have them, man. Like, That's everybody right. has them. Yeah. So... You know, nobody's any better than anybody else. Right. And everybody has, and you wouldn't trade yours for mine, I wouldn't trade mine for yours, and, <laughs> and the, you know, and everyone in here is the same. So to me, I see it as 
we're all the same, dude. It's just so, it's almost like we're all just a bunch of mixed up kids. Everybody is the same. Yes. We yeah. live in a same society. Every yeah. human being you know, yeah. every human being you ever know, yeah. every human being you ever meet, yeah. every human being that have ever existed is living in hell. Yes. Isn't that something? Yeah, it's true. Isn't that amazing, huh? Everyone, They're I saw all the same. In Hawaii and actually in Lahaina, right, about 10 years ago. I was at a bar with my buddy, and actually my buddy that I was with just passed away from alcoholism, right? And we went to a bar together, and it said in the, bat- the back of the bar next to the register, it says, be kind. Everyone's fighting their own battle. Yeah. You know, and I thought about that because that, bar- that was for the bartenders to read, obviously, with obnoxious drunks or, you know, right. whoever they have to encounter. And it said that at the, at the, to where only the bartender could see it. And I thought about that, and I'm like, man, isn't that the truth? It's like we all have our own cross to bear. We're all, we all have our own battles, and you wouldn't trade yours for anybody else's and vice versa. Do you think God made us to have demons? I think that's the, the interesting dynamic. I think that's the duality of being a human being is that we have to have those internal fights. Do you believe God gave us the demons? God is the Alpha and the Omega, right? Who? The Alpha and the Omega. So to me, everything is under God's watchful eye so I think could it be a necessary thing to have a shadow or a dark night of the soul or something you have to go through to grow into light I don't know I, I think I think one needs the other it's the yin and yang so do you believe that God gave us the demons I wouldn't say it like that that's a very complicated loaded question like I wouldn't say gave us the demons I would say I think a lot of our life we bring on our own demons how by the trials and tribulations we face and the people we encounter and the decisions we make and lead so, us into certain paths and roads that, that we don't need to go down, but we learn from them. I think demons can be a necessary learning experience. Having, you know, so, but you don't believe God gave us the demons? Well, I mean, if I say God gave us the demons, it's gonna, then, then, then I would imagine that you'll come back and say, well, God, you know, that's the direct opposite of what God is. God, and that is not from God. You but imagine I, that's what I'm going to say? Huh? You say you imagine that's what yeah, I'm going to say? Yeah, but that's what be. What? Uh, I'm just saying, like, for me, I believe, I believe that there is a duality that only a human being can experience. And this duality is, it's dark night and, and light. It's, it's dark and light. And, and I think that's what creates the human experience. Do you believe God gave us I a mean, name? I don't believe he gave it to us. Well, who gave no, him to us? I mean, I, I, would have to, I would have to that. say there's a, an opposing dark force, right? But that is the yin and yang, that opposing dark force. To me, I've grown more out of my dark experiences. Do you get what I'm saying? Like through my trials and tribulations, through my, my demons have, have propelled me to grow into being a better person. And better in what way? More understanding, suffering knows many languages. Does that make sense? Like, I, like, like, having to deal with my own demons has made it for me able to understand other people and their actions and have a better understanding of life. Do you believe that you are your demons? I think you create them. I think you can create them. But I also believe in. I do believe in the. I do believe there's a. Um, there's outside forces that that are demonic. And so do you believe you are your demons? I believe you can bring in demons uh, into your life. But, but do you believe that you are your demons? To an extent. And how are you your demon? How am I my own demon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, well, I, I, I mean, I, I believe that there are outside forces that you can bring into your life, like parasites. Does that so make sense? You believe that you brought in your own demons? I think you can bring in your own demons. Why did you bring in demons? Decisions. Decisions. So I, think, decide- I think anytime you drink, right, you're opening yourself up like a portal. So you walk down sources. the road one day and decide, you know what, I'm so happy. Let me bring in some demons. I don't think you deliberately say, hey, I want to bring them in, but I think they can come. And if you're making unwise or irresponsible decisions, I think I think you can open yourself up to a plethora of of demons. Yeah, I I, I don't listen. 
I'm not pretending I know. I'm just saying right, that I, understand. I can feel like that's probably a realistic outcome. If I'm out drinking, right, and I'm and I'm partying with friends and I'm drinking, all of a sudden I'm not thinking clearly. I'm not making the decisions I usually would make right. if, when I'm sober. And I, it's almost like I feel like I become an amusement park to whatever entity wants to enter my life right. or my soul, right? And go for a joy ride, you know? So I feel like your decisions and what you do in life, uh, you know, can lead to you you're opening yourself up to outside forces. Does that make sense? So if you believe that you bring in your own demons, I think why you can. can't you take them away from you? Why did I take that? Why can't you take them away I from did. yourself? But you still have some. They're always going to be there. They're probably waiting for me to go drink again. Why not take away them all? Since you're not drinking, you know they're there. Well, that's and up you to believe God. You that's brought... it, that's, I, I feel like I'm doing very good. I feel for me, not making the decision not to do drugs and drink again is me conquering my demons. Um, but they, some of them are still there. Well, I think they're always going to be dormant. There's going to be some that are You don't think there. they're ever going to leave? Do you think you'll ever I be can't free? answer that. I hope they do. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do. I don't know, man. But why don't you take, just reach there and take them out? I've asked. I mean, and I don't who? I don't feel like they're controlling my life anymore. Who you know what I mean? Ask? They're not in God. And what do you say? I feel like yes, I've exercised them. I think they're gone. I, I feel I think whatever's there would be up to me to bring them back. Like if I said, hey, let's go have a drink after this. And I went out. That, that would be being. That would be me making a decision to be irresponsible and let them back in to control um, my life. Um, do you believe? Do you believe that you can live a life of perfect peace here on Earth? That's hard, but I think you can. Sure. And, wh and why is it hard? There's so many temptations. You know, everyone has temptations. And why do you think you can? <laughs> why do I think I can? Why do you believe you can live a life of perfect peace? Honestly, I think the less people, the, the less people in my life that I associate with, the more peace I have. <laughs> <laughs> I think hell is people. I mean, if you want my honest truth, I think like dealing with, the more people you deal, you deal with, the more problems you have, you know? I, I, I just try to keep my circle small and, I, I, and, and that's my peace, honestly. And so you do believe that you can live a life of perfect peace? No. I don't think I don't I, I think I think the human experience has confrontation. It has duality. I think we're here to experience all things. So, I mean, would you? It would be nice. It's ideal. Oh, if I could live a life of perfect peace. But I think we're here to experience it all. And then that's what builds us. That's what builds our character is having confrontation, ha having those type of experiences. Uh, you know, to better form and to better form our spirit. You know. Have you ever met anyone that didn't have perfect peace but had character? Yeah, a lot of people. Ooh. A lot of actors, a lot of athletes. Uh -oh. They're acting. <laughs> I'm trying to go deep with this, and it's like I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on right now, but it's good. <laughs> um, I know that you can have. Oh. So you don't believe you can have perfect peace, right, in this life? I think it's hard to attain, man. I mean, I mean, they, they say some monks have done it, right? Some people have ascended. I don't know. Those monks have not done it. Either. That's why they hide. I, mean, it. I don't know. That's man. why they hide in the wood and just <laughs> meditate all day. But they're away from everybody, right? right but that's not perfect <laughs> peace. I think getting away from most people's peace. I, for me, I've but, had more peace being away from people. I know, but the hell is still with you. The hell's with me. Even yeah, though you, you, you lower the number of people that I, you meet. I, I never said I was perfect. Right, but no. You, but I have those temptations, yes. Yeah. So even though you get rid of so It's many still there. That, that little hatchet man still is inside me. Right. Like self-destructive. Yeah, that's why, I, that, that's why I don't drink. Because I know that if I drink, that guy comes out. And that's not good. Right. But he still comes out even when you're sober. Not really. A little bit. Not really, man. No. Uh, and not, why, not nearly. You control like, him? That's what control, that's, I'm much more able to control him. So you can control the spirit of evil? I cannot let it take control of me. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I can definitely put a lid on it. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, so, so you don't believe it's possible to have perfect peace on earth? 
I mean, you're asking me questions that only God can really answer, man. I, I don't, I mean, what you're t I, I feel to me the human experience has a lot of trials and tribulation and confrontation, and Christ I think that's what shapes us. Christ came so that we can have a perfect peace on earth. He said we can. And he was crucified. Was he lying when he said we can have no, perfect peace? No, he wasn't lying, but I'm just saying. But why he said it then if it, if it was true? If you don't believe it, why did okay, he say it? Okay, so you're asking me what if. Christ said that. He came so that we could have perfect peace right here on earth. Was he lying? No, I don't think. But why he said it then? I think he came to deliver us from this. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Right, but he said we could have perfect peace right here. Do you know anybody that has perfect peace? Yes. Who? You? I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, <laughs> but what Christ... I don't know anybody that has perfect peace, okay? What's so Christ, that's new to me. Was Christ lying? I'm not saying like... No, he's not lying. Then no. why don't you believe him then? For me personally, I have not had perfect peace in my life. That's but why, why I'm don't saying you that. believe Christ that you can't have it? I'm sure you can. I, if there's someone out there that has, I have yet to meet that person. But why do you need to meet another person to know that you can have it when Christ said you can? <laughs> Is this real? <laughs> I mean, dude, what's going on here? <laughs> Is what real? <laughs> this. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I believe, yes, what's Christ, wrong with I this? believe in peace, but I have yet to meet a person that has perfect peace. I've what's never wrong met. with this right here right now? I just think it's 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 comical in some way, but it's great. Oh, okay. It's good. It's um, very stimulating. I like it. So you would need to meet someone before you can believe that you can have perfect peace. You would need to meet <sighs> someone. Then I would with need to meet someone peace. with. Per I've ne me personally, I've never met anybody with perfect peace. I think everyone has their own their own cross to bear. And so, and that's life. I think that's right. and that's also that's also a, a, the beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. But I'm do you say you say you say you need to meet someone that has? I don't need to meet anybody. <laughs> so I'd rather not. <laughs> so do you believe that you can have perfect peace without having to meet? For the somebody? sake of this argument, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, yes. You're right. Peace. <laughs> but you said that you're a Christian, right? Yes, I'm. T I try my best to be. So you have already met someone that had perfect peace. Have I already met somebody? Yeah, if you're a Christian. Then it's Jesus Christ, right? Right. Yeah. You met Christ, right? I know the actor, too, very well. <laughs> have you met Christ? I feel like I've accepted Jesus Christ when I was a young child. And he yeah. had perfect peace. Right, and that's how what's helped me get through my trials and tribulations today is through that. What but I'm not going to lie and say, like, I live a life of perfect right. peace. And that's I feel, right. You shouldn't lie. Like that. You I must be honest with yourself about it. Yeah, I'm very honest. Yeah. I, 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 me, myself, I, I did not have perfect peace. You want do it? Do I want to attain that? Yes. You do? What gets me through my problems is Jesus Christ. Okay. Let me tell you, ask you this, and then I'll tell you okay. how you can have it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, you said there's a yang and a yang. I think that's just the natural laws of life. It's just the way it is. Are they both from China? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. What is a yang and a yang? The yin and the yang is it's it's the the the, the, the balance of life. The ba balance of life. Which ba what, what does that mean? It means like you know just the the the, the balance, the duality. What does that mean? Though? For every action is a reaction, or, or or this. It's the balance. It's what. Balances the scales, I guess you could say. So one balance the other. I, I think I don't know what that I, means. I, I, I'm black, I don't know where you're I'm getting at, but I'm, I'm slow. I don't know what that means. I really don't know what that means. I've heard it before, but I never had anyone that said it. In I, front of me. I'll put it this way: Am I trying to attain a more peaceful life? I am absolutely trying to attain a more peaceful. And life. will you get that from the yang or the yang? I'm saying that's just the order of life, that you know. Everyone here has faced their problems and, you know, learned from them, right? right. So, so for me, it's like I have learned, the, the, it's helped shape me. Like every time I go work out in the gym or I boxed, um, the punches don't feel good, right? But that's what teaches me to help move my head and get out of the way. You learn from certain things to better yourself and right. become a better man. That's just how it is. That's also life. And so, I guess I can, I can compare a lot of stuff to boxing. Yin and yang is like a dual kind of a human being. It's a duality of life. Of, of a human being. It's 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 you know it's night and it's day. And they so need are each you other. A, you don't you wouldn't know day without night, right? Are you a dual person or are you a whole person? Am I what? 
A dual, dual, this yin and yang person, yeah. or are you a whole person? One whole person. So why do you have the but yang I think and the yang? I, I don't know if you're, you're understanding what I'm saying. Really. Right now, I'm black and slow. <laughs> you know how the blacks are, right? I'm just, I'm just saying, like, there's, you know, there's good so and bad. You like that to be a whole there. person, no yang and okay, no yang. Okay, I'm gonna say I want to be a whole person. Yes. You do want to be it. Yeah. You got to forgive your mother. Okay. Your mother has recreated in her in her image. And by turning you away from your father and making you identify with her, and when she turned you away from your father, she turned you away from God. Because if you don't love your earthly father, you never love God. But I do love my earthly father. No, you don't. I'm very close to him. To Have day. you forgiven your mother? Oh, there's, your earthly father you love. There, you're, far, you're right about that. All my, my parents are still together. You. Have you forgiven your mother? For what? Turning you away from your father. She never did. But how did you become like her? I'm not like her at all. You have her emotions. No, I don't. You have her mindset. Nope. You have your father emotion mindset. I would say so. So he has his mother. Maybe mindset. he has his father with his mom. <laughs> so he became like your father. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And so, the, you, have you forgiven your mother for anything? I, I don't need to. I love them. She, she, how about your mother? I love them both. I love my mother and my father. Have you forgiven her for anything? No, she's been a great mom. I, I, she's been amazing. Have so you, is my dad. Have you forgiven your mother for anything? I mean, not, I mean, there's nothing that I would need to forgive I her can't, for. She's, I can't hear you. I, there's nothing I really need to forgive her for. She her. did nothing wrong. Nah, nothing. I mean, I was a, I was a, I was an asshole as a kid. So whatever, whatever ass beating I got, I probably deserved it. She did nothing wrong. I would never. Let's put it this way. She used to put the beat down on me, right? But what do you I, mean by that? Like, you know, whip me with a belt or hit me with a broom or whatever, but that's because I deserved it. So your mother used to hit you with the belt, beat you with a broom, beat you down, and you deserved it. Oh, yeah. Why did you deserve to be treated that way? Because I was doing really bad things. And, and <laughs> Shooting out windows, running from the cops. I mean, I was doing bad stuff. And what caused you to do that? Uh, uh, adrenaline junkie. And what caused that? I wanted to have fun. Uh, Wanting to get in trouble. Do you think, and so your mother beat you down with brooms and belts. Until it didn't work anymore. And, I'm sorry? Until it didn't work anymore. and then Until she couldn't beat you anymore? And then I just grew out of it. And ha when she was doing that, were you feeling happy about it or angry about it? No, but I understood. Did you feel happy about it or angry about it? Neither. I, I understood. I, did, I understood I deserved it. Would, I was not, it was not a... Why would you think you deserved to be Because I was down? a bad kid. But I was you terrible. Had become, you had become like her. <laughs> I'm not like her. I'm not like either of my parents, believe it or not. But when you would tell your father that my mother beat me with a belt and bat... My dad did too. He, he did? Yeah. With belts and bats? I used to put on 10 pairs of underwear every time he told me he was going to spank me. And he'd, and then he'd did you forgive laughing. him for that? Yeah. I, I mean... I deserved it. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in. But you didn't deserve that. I, I don't believe That's in. Insane. I think you should. If you have to speak, you didn't kid, deserve that. I, I beg to differ. That's why it led to other things because of that beating and treating you that way. Uh, you didn't deserve. I was that. a bad kid. I was a really bad kid. But they made you that way by no. treating you that way. <laughs> when you became angry, <laughs> you became like them. <laughs> I'm not angry. You said you have anger, so you are angry. Uh, I mean, I get as angry as you do, or as any of these people here for whatever situation arises. So you that don't could piss think you need to forgive your mother for doing that to you and your father? Forgive them for 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 the beatdown, scolding me for the beatdown. No, I think I think I deserved it. Really? Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't play victim on anything. I, I don't. I don't. But uh, faith in what went wrong is not. Should, there, I, should I forgive? It's like saying. Going into a fight, and I'm going into the fight as a man in, in the boxing ring. You get knocked out, you get knocked out. I, I take full responsibility for my actions, everything I do. What made you take responsibility of the, for the beatdown? Why, why would you say I deserve that? Because I was an asshole. I was a bad kid. A but real the beatdown didn't help it. It only made it worse. <laughs> but, you know, Did the you way know? I see it, but what were they going to do? Send me into my room. I would have left. I would have crawled, crawled out the window. I don't. I would have found the only way. That I respected my mother, and my father, and whatever. What, however, they decided to 
which I don't know how we got off on this conversation, but <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know what directions we're going here, but <laughs> it's entertaining. I got to tell you, but I, I don't, uh, I, I don't at all hold any ill will towards them or, 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 and if you, if, if you really ask me, do I forget if, are you asking me if I forgive them for spanking me? I ask you, have you forgiven them for the beatdown? I never, it was never an issue with me because I understood what I was doing But did you them. notice as you got gotten older or any time in life that the beatdown didn't help? They only made it worse? No. You haven't noticed that? No, I've noticed sometimes when I've punched somebody and ended it right there, it was the best thing to do. And do you know that... You, what had been done to you, you were doing that to others? You were doing I, I agree with that when I was bullied. Yeah, when you were I was doing bullied, beat down. When I was bullied and then I, later in life I became the bully, so I do agree with that. And you became the bully because you became what you hate, your parents were doing uh, no, that to I was, you. No, I hated the kids that used to beat me up. And you hate your parents for beating you up I hate my too. parents, I don't hate my parents. But have you noticed that it didn't get better after the beat down? It only got worse. You started I made their life worse. Right, because But you, I was making their life worse before the beat downs. You were making their life worse. I was making their life really bad before the beat downs too. Because of time, did your mother do anything else wrong that you didn't like? Uh, no, I, I love my mother. I then, love my mother and my father. And then if you love them, why don't you forgive them? I don't need to forgive them. I love them. I don't, how would you be free of... Okay, I forgive them. I forgive no. them. Let's just go how would you, <laughs> God said that... This is crazy. God said that before you enter into the kingdom, you must go and forgive. You uh, cannot enter into the kingdom with anger because anger is the nature of the devil. Okay. Oh, I agree. How will you enter in if you don't forgive? I forgive. I, okay, okay let me ask you this. I got slit here, right? I got my, my neck slashed open. Right. I've let it go. I've forgiven them. I'm, I'm, I don't hold on to that. Right. So that was anger, right? That, that's, I had every right to hold on to that. I let that go. No, you have a right to hold on to that either. Who is the best boxer? The boxer with anger or the one that has no anger? Anger is a gift if you can control it. So who is the best boxer? You're telling the, me Mike Tyson was never angry? I'm asking who is the best well, boxer. He was never, when he was never angry. You, anger is something you have to control. You've got to be a calculated killer. When you go in the ring, you're calm, but you better believe. You better have that anger. So when you're going to explode on somebody, you've got to be able to do it at that precise moment. And anger is absolutely a tool you need to use. And who is the best boxer? The one with the anger or the one without the anger? Oof. I'm going to say the one with controlled anger. So you're saying that the one with the anger. With the controlled anger. But he still has anger. Anger right? is a gift. Remember, I said anger a can gift be from a gift. Who? To use properly in, in a violent situation like boxing, anger can be a gift. From who? Well, I'm not going to go into the boxing ring and try to make love to the guy. No, who is I'm the, going in there to give No, to, but to who whoop. is the anger a gift from? The boxing gods. I don't know. <laughs> but if I'm choosing to go into the boxing ring, right, that's a very violent uh, situation. You better believe. The guy with the killer instinct and the anger is going to come out on top. But it's got to be controlled. You can't go in there. If I go in there with no emotion, that's impossible. Really? You, yeah, no. You, 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 you're calm, but anybody who says they don't have that emotion is lying or they're insane. But how do you know that? Because I did this sport my entire so, life. <laughs> so Christ didn't have it. Was he lying? Jesus, I'm not comparing myself to Christ, first of all. I'm, comparing, I'm, I'm just talking as a, as a human being, as a fighter, getting in the ring. I got to ask this then. I okay, got to okay. move on. Would you rather be a whole person or a divided person? A whole person. Well, how would you ever become whole when you have an up and down personality? You're divided. You're happy with this. Are you a whole person? Yes. Okay. But I was divided, so I understand it. How will you ever become whole? So, so let me ask you this: What are you trying to get out of me right here? Because nothing, just come. Uh, okay, just conversation. Yeah. But I'm telling you that yes, I've had my demons, I've had my fights, and I'm trying to be a better person. Is that mm -hmm. not good enough? <laughs> Is it? That's amazing. All right. That's amazing. All right. Um, and so, just once again, you're saying that a person with the anger. But in control, the boxing ring. Right, in, in the, the boxing, boxing ring. But that's a violent situation. Right. It's a violent situation, but you still got to be calm, right? Right. You got to go in there calm, but know when to use that explosive anger. Uh, let's see, like when you get a guy hurt, you got, you, listen, a guy that's calm all the time ain't going to do shit in boxing. It's got to be calculated. You got to know when to 
uh, have that killer instinct? Um, so a person that is calm all the time in the boxing ring with no anger, he should see clear who will most likely win the fight. If, because a person that has anger can't see clear, right? A person that don't no, have no, anger... No, 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 no. but you don't, you don't go in there angry. You don't go in there... Uh, I, like, you don't go in there in emotional wreck. You go in there calm and cool, level-headed with a strategy. And you turn on that anger, it's off and on. It's the killer instinct. When I get a guy hurt, I'm not going to be... Mm. Oh, I know where I went, and then I got to move on. Uh, <laughs> is anger an un, unnatural state or a natural state? For some, probably, some people it might be natural. For some people it's unnatural. I don't know. Uh, it's do up to the person. For me, it would be a terrible state to live in. I would not want to be angry all the time. It's not a natural state? No way. Okay. Amazing. You wrote a book called... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> This is good. Oh, God. If you could be free of anger, period, would you accept that way? Heck yes. Okay. And so you don't know that forgiveness, do you believe forgiveness is the clue to that? Yes. Then why don't you forgive? I do forgive. But you have to forgive your parents. I don't need to forgive them. I love them. I don't need to forgive for anything. I love them. Amazing. I don't have I don't have no ill will I just nothing think towards my parents. Why, why do you keep going back to my parents? Because that's where the beginning of a freedom. I, 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 think I don't have I, anything to forgive them for. I, I, I think I, it's amazing. I let understand. me put it this way. Let me just say this. My dad's 88. My mom's 80, 80, going to be 85 next month. I take care of them. Oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I take care of them. You stop, huh? Uh, well, I, I choose to because I, I love them. So, you know. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Uh, Are you an only child? No. Yeah, sisters? Yeah. Why don't they take care of your mama or daddy? My, one of my sisters passed, and the other one lives in another state. And she won't come and take care of them? Uh, it's it's kind of hard for her to do that. Oh. You know, she has responsibilities and other things she's doing. In, in and you don't have them? Oh, I do, but I thank God I, I have uh, the means to be able to do it, what I'm doing. You wrote a book called When the Light Go, go, go Out. What's that about? When the lights go out, yeah. Yeah, when the lights go out. Go out. What's that about? Uh, it's about the end of a career. It's the end of a, it's about getting knocked out. It's about the end of it's the, the lights in the arena going out. There's no more limelight anymore. There's no more boxing. It's just the end of this, the abrupt ending of my career and uh, the aftermath. And I kind of just went into uh, my life that led me up to boxing. It really was a cathartic experience to write the book, Therapy, and to actually... Uh, look back on my life, like what led me into boxing, right. why I chose that life, and then uh, the ending of it, and then how I had to start over. Did you feel a, sim a sense of emptiness when you had that no more? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, big time. And how did you deal with that emptiness? Mm. Uh, drinking. You went right. back to drinking? Yeah. When the lights went out? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it, and so you went to drinking? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you live in El Paso, Texas, right? Yeah. Um, what do you think about the illegal aliens coming across the borders? To be quite honest with you, uh, nothing's changed. <laughs> you know, I mean, they make a big spectacle about it on the on the mainstream media, but they're being flown out yeah. to other cities. So, so they're not they're not staying in El Paso. Right. So, like, people think that there's, like, a war zone going on in El Paso. That's not what's happening. El Paso is actually a very safe city. Right now, the, the illegals are being bussed, flown out of airports and bussed to cities all across the United States. So, really, they're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming to... New York. Uh, yeah, New York, Texas. liberal cities. I mean, uh, I guess some parts of Texas. All, all, over, all over the United States, but they're not staying in El Paso. So, is, do you believe that they should put the wall up? I think... I think something needs to be done. How about the wall? Yeah, probably the wall. I, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mean, I'm against the the cruelty against human beings, and you know them them. You know, a lot of people are coming here for a better life, trying to find a better life, but not when they come here and take advantage of the system. Most of them are coming for free stuff because they have been told in advance. 100 percent, I agree with that. So I think you know, for every ten good people, there's two or three really bad ones, and I think yeah. we're getting a lot of human trafficking. We're getting a lot of um, 
uh, drugs that are coming here. The fentanyl's killing everybody. I think yeah. the fentanyl deaths are over 100 something thousand a year now. And it's killing people that are from the ages of 15 to 25. I know. So like this is a serious problem and it's gonna wipe out our youth. Yeah. So the border needs to be shut down, no doubt about it. Um, so was I a big proponent of a Trump's wall? I mean, 100%, but yeah. I mean, you know, what's happening right now is a human uh, trafficking epidemic. That's what's really going on. So like it's when mess, people, man. yeah, when people need to understand, people really need to understand, yeah. like this is free range for them. Like they're coming here and the human trafficking and tunneling and what's going on is, is off the charts, man. That's mess. gonna surpass the drug trade. I gotta ask you fast now, but let me ask, what do you think of the Great White Hope? The Great White Hope? Yeah. Tyson Fury? He's knocking out everybody. Klitschko, he was knocking out every. There's no more Great White Hope. That's already been done. No, oh no, there's a Great White Hope. I was the Great White Mexican. See there? <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't know who the Great White Hope is? Uh, I mean, back in the. I'm talking about now. The Great White Hope's already champion. It's Tyson Fury. He's champ. He made it. No, there's one greater than Tyson Fury Ooh. Donald Trump. Oh yeah, but he's he's gonna be re he, that, that man's coming back. He's I'm coming back. Yeah. yeah, he's coming back. You, you vote for him? If you don't want to say, you don't have to. But no, I'm a Trump supporter. Everyone knows right that. On. My channel is dedicated to to that. But 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 what I'm saying is, I'm gonna say that we're probably not gonna have an election. Okay, I think that's where this is heading. I think we're gonna see Democrat. He's gonna win. I think something. I think, gonna gonna, gonna I think there's gonna be an event that happens before. And you he'll be reinstated. He'll be it. reinstated. You can smoke on it. Let me ask this. Yeah. What's wrong with the blacks? With the what? What's wrong with the blacks? They need to get behind them. The Democratic Party's done nothing for them. So what's wrong with them? They're so out of control. You answer that. I don't know. You're black. <laughs> 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 You're black, man. You answer that. <laughs> <laughs> They're angry. <laughs> they are pissed. I've noticed but that. But they're yeah. angry at their mothers. Their mothers have. <laughs> so that's where them. this is coming from. No. <laughs> You're angry at your mom. Every human being, male and female, hate their mothers. I don't hate my mom. Why would I? You hate do. My mom? You just I don't, don't realize. Know. I don't hate my mom. Oh no! Don't worry. It'll I hit. love my mom. Let me know when you wake up. So to why her. would I hate my mom? Because, why? Because she imposed her will on you. And By she, changing my diaper. And she recreated you her image. But uh, I'll have time to go back to that right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the craziest interview ever. I love it though. It's good. <laughs> it's good. I like this. Do you believe racism exists? Yes. And, and where's your proof? Because everyone I know, because I laugh at all the racist jokes, and I, and everyone I know says something racist. Everyone does. But where's your proof that racism exists? Because people is people judge everybody. I don't care. Listen. I, it doesn't bother me. I have to me. It's I don't black people that that. Talk about white people. I know Mexicans that talk about white people. I know Me but, white but, people that talk about Mexicans. I know, but Mexicans your, make fun of other Mexicans. Where's your proof, though, that racism is in? There's, I think you can feel it. There's no proof. I think I, 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 no proof. Right. Oh man, go to go to jail. <laughs> Have you ever been in jail? No. All right, that's everything segregated in race. Right, everything segregated. Yeah, there's blacks, there's the woods, too. there's the Chinese, there's the. But there's where's a, your proof that racism is in? Go to prison. But that's no proof. They really? just fight each other. Try to hang out with the whites. They fight Try to hang out country. with the Mexicans. Um, I mean, what, what, I don't understand like, what you're going to But that's at. hatred. That's not racism. That's yeah, that. but they're still segregated. They're still in blocks. They're still... But know, that's hatred. That's not racism. I think it, that, that stems from hatred, right? I think it's just categorized that direction. No, there's no such thing as racism. It's only either hate or love. And the, and okay. the ones who want to deceive you, they say racism, so you don't see that as hate. I agree with that. It, racism is evil. I agree it's with that. It's angry. It's not racism. I agree with that. Isn't that amazing? I agree with that. I'm not disagreeing with that. How about white supremacists? Do you believe that is this? Well, I guess it would be hatred. I'm sorry? I guess that would be hatred. Absolutely. It's so not, hatred exists. It's only, only hate, hate and love. Right. I agree You have one or the other. I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm uh, agreeing with you on that. So no such thing as racism. Okay, so it's just hatred. Right. Right. Arrest my case. Okay. Do you love white people? I love all people, man. I don't, I don't. Do you love white people? Yes. You love white people? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. 
<laughs> this is entertaining. I gotta give it to you. <laughs> I do gotta give it to you. So I gotta uh, put you on the. Oh, I gotta ask this person. Then I gotta put you on the hot seat. Okay. Do you agree with me that the God above is the man's God, and the God below is the woman's God? Mm. Well, the God, the God below used the woman to deceive man, right? Right. So do you agree oh, that? You're going to put me in the hot seat. <laughs> I'm in the hot seat now. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 believe, Why are you I no? believe he was able to manipulate and control the woman, but I think God is the creator of all things. That's not what I ask. I ask, do you believe, do you believe that the God above is the man God and the God below is the woman's God? No, okay. I say I say the God above is the God of all things. But how can that's not what? But I but she was deceived by that. And when she was deceived, did, did the God below become her God? Mm. No, God is always God. I think he, she she was uh, deceived by that. When she was deceived by the devil, evil. You know, I'm not like a Bible scholar. I'm not a Bible scholar. <laughs> I am not a Bible thumper. Okay. <laughs> when she when she was deceived by evil, did he become her God? At that point, maybe becoming her God, maybe becoming something, and Adam as well too then, because Adam... We're going to get to Adam in a minute. Okay. When she was deceived by evil, uh-huh. did he become her God? I would say not her God, he became her controller. And controller is her what? Controller. I'm not going to say give him, I'm not, but there's one God and that's God. But did He'll he, never compare to the true God. So I didn't compare him to yeah, God. Yeah, but you're, say, you're trying to get me to say that she. No, I'm trying to ask, I'm not trying to get you to say anything. Okay. I ask, ask, is the God below when she believed him, did he become her God? It's impossible for him to be the God. The God is always God. the woman's but God. But she, she listened to him. And she when listened she listened to him. To but him. he could never replace God. And no one said all that. But you're trying to say, did, did he become her God? Yeah. I, he cannot ever become God. Then why did her nature become like his, so evil? She was deceived by him. So her nature became evil. All right. He so wait, are you, is this like, it's and, like is this like, <laughs> I think I know where we're going with this. Is this... <laughs> This is interesting, very interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. I see where you're going in the diversions. Where am I, how am I going with this? You want me to say? No, uh, I don't want the, you to say. You want me to say that yes, he became her god, and therefore the woman is controlled by the devil. But knowing that, why can't you say it? You're a Christian. Because I, I don't believe that. I don't believe. I don't. I really, truly don't believe women is controlled by the devil. Who controls? Is that what you're saying? Who, who, Do you believe that? Yes. I you know really that. believe women are controlled by the devil until they overcome. Until they, until they are born again of the Father. But so if a woman's born again, well, right. then, then, then she's God. Then, God. But you say you're saying if they're not, they're automatically by default controlled by the devil? 100%. What about man? Why do you say all, why do you say man, all the hell come through the woman? What? Have you noticed that? Well, and men too? No, have you noticed all the hell come through the woman? No, I've seen a lot of men that are... We're going to get to that, but have you noticed all the hell came, come through the woman? I have total peace with the woman I'm with right now. No, that's not what I ask. Have you noticed all the hell come through the woman? In what way? The way the hell come through her. (laughs) (laughs) I had no idea this is what I was in for, man. This is good. (laughs) And and, and remember how... (laughs) Oh, man. There's no coffee in there. You want some coffee? Uh, you want some water and coffee? Uh, you want some water? It's fresh water. No one had it. Thank you. Uh, and then you remember how God was, it's the man God, right? But once yeah. the man, Adam, listened to the woman, the woman became his God. Okay. That's why man. I know he was deceived. She was deceived by Satan. He was deceived by the woman. Right. And the woman became his God, right? I don't know. Should I agree with you? Let's no, just for, no, no, for no. argument's sake, I'll agree with you. No. <laughs> Didn't the woman become the man God when he believed her? She deceived him. So do is you, that what you believe? Do you ever listen to women? Not really. Why not? Because <laughs> I have my own opinion and I trust mine way more. It was good for you, man, because every time the man listens to the woman, he suffers. Have you noticed that? 
I don't agree with it. I, I mean, I agree with it? what you're saying. I, I, I don't agree for men to, to that listen to like, uh, I gotta ask my wife or I gotta right. do I don't, I, I don't agree with that. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> is every interview like this? <laughs> or is it just this one? Have you ever told a woman your problems? No. Good. I have to hear hers. Nice. Yeah. Good for you. I got to put you on the hot seat. Oh, well, I thought I was in the hot seat. <laughs> so I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Oh, shit. All right. There's no math. <laughs> what? <laughs> no right. math. No, don't worry about math. Right. Black people don't know math anyway, so don't worry about that. Neither do Mexicans. The hot seat. What is a man? What is the man? What is a man? A person that stands in their truth and uh, follows God. Should a man play the woman's sport? Hell no. Should a woman play a man's sport? No. Nice. Who would win a fight? Tyson Fury or Muhammad Ali? Oof. Man. Different eras. But I'd have to... I'd have to say a six foot nine, three hundred pound guy that can box the way Tyson does. I think it's. I'd have to give it to Tyson. At this, Tyson I, I know. I know people don't agree with that, but Tyson I think Fury? Lennox Lewis will beat them all. But Tyson Fury will win over Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was flashier. He was just not as big. He's six foot two. Tyson Fury six foot nine. It's a different game now. Is America the best country on this side of heaven? What's that? Is America the best comp, uh, country on this side of heaven? Yes. Have you ever told someone how the cow ate the cabbage? No. Uh, true or false, abortion is worse than slavery. A what? Abortion is worse than slavery. True or false? Uh, I'm going to say true. Is the earth flat or round? Can I say it's obtuse? <laughs> Does a chicken have lips? No. Who, who is more entertaining to watch? Oh, which is more entertaining to watch? Boston? Or UFC? For me, boxing. Is Joe Biden the worst president you yes, ever? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you believe in climate change? No. Do educated women make for good wives and mothers? Yes. Would you ever marry an educated woman? Yes. What the? An educated woman? Yeah. yeah. I don't want to. An, an imbecile. But you don't care pure hell with an educated no, woman. No, no. There's emotional intelligence. So is that emotional intelligence? Do you create your own thoughts? Do you what? Do you create your own thoughts? I believe so. How do you create them? By my mind. How? By my emotions. I Tell me this number one to number three step of creating your own thoughts. Now, acting on your thoughts, I have thoughts all the time, but it's about acting on your thoughts that's important. So. Tell me how do you create your own thoughts? How do I create my own thoughts? It's, sometimes I, uh, whatever pops in my mind, and I'll so, think about it, and I, I don't even know the, the, I don't even know how to answer this question, to be honest. So you just said whatever. <laughs> I don't know how anybody would answer this question, but. <laughs> you just said whatever pops in your mind. I mean, you, Do I, you create the thought that pops in your mind? I don't know. Maybe sometimes it's from an outside ethernet of super consciousness. How about that? <laughs> how, so, about, how about I'm tapped in like an antenna to the ethernet of super consciousness and whatever I pick up, I pick up. So, so you don't create your thoughts? So maybe you? not. Have you ever thought about maybe that? Maybe so. You, have you ever thought that you don't create your own thoughts? Yes. And then, but you thought you did? I thought I haven't, I thought I haven't. If you did, why would you create bad thoughts? That makes you feel afraid, makes you feel <sighs> empty, makes you feel lonely. It goes back to the duality of, of the human being. I mean, so you I don't, don't create your own thoughts then? So what you're gonna say is the devil throws those thoughts in my mind. Oh, so you don't create your own thoughts? I don't know. I think, because you would know, I think I think we are an interface. Because sometimes you have good thoughts, right? Okay. That makes you feel good. Right. I'd rather and, have those. And then as soon as you're feeling good, now you got a bad thought that bring you down. Yeah. And then you have another good thought bring you up. Yeah. And then you have another bad thought take you down. Right. Why would you create thoughts like that if you create thoughts? Well, then ask the pessimist. Who? Ask the pessimist. Ask the pessimist? Pessimist. The pissed off Ask person? a pessimist who has negative thoughts all the time. Who is that? That dictates their life. No, I'm asking and you. if you want to talk about good thoughts, ask the optimist. I'm asking you, if you <laughs> create your own thought, why would you create good and bad? You will always create good thoughts. Right, but I think where my life is going right now, I'm creating more good thoughts and acting on those more so in my life. Than How are before. you doing that? How are you creating the good ones? I'm here on your show, right? It's That's a good, a good, good thought. Thing. It's a good thought, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Did you have fun? Yes. It was amazing. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was fun. Thank you for coming yeah, on. Thank you for having me. I totally appreciate it. So tell the folks about your podcast, how to get it, or, and your books and everything Yeah, else. Uh, When the Lights Go Out on Amazon uh, and uh, Nino's Corner.tv, All Things War, your one-stop shop for the deep state, all, all Things War on the deep state. I, d I go into the underbelly of uh, deep state politics, and I have a lot of amazing and very good guests on there. Right on. Thank you for coming, thank you. man. Thank you for having me. And thank me. you all for tuning in. Don't forget that you can support the Father State by going to the fatherstate.tv slash donate. And also locals, click on the link, locals.com. Click on the link in the description to support our work. And don't forget to like, follow, ring the bell, subscribe, telephone, tell a mama. I mean, telephone, telegraph, and tell your mama about the show. For first, right. forgive her. You got to forgive her. <laughs> forgive your mama. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Nice. <laughs> that was good.